now that we've generated all the heat, we've got to do something with it or else it's not, gonna, not, not going to uh, retain power for very long. Uh, we've ended up going to a system that ends up having a, a total of, of uh, eight heat exchangers in it in order to be able to keep all the elements cool. We start out with the basic where, uh, where we end up having uh, engine oil. Engine oil has to be uh, uh, dealt with first and its primary function or the primary function of that cooler is to exchange uh, uh, heat to the coolant from the engine oil. So now we've ended up doing a good job of heating up the, uh, the coolant with two means, the normal means and then the engine oil, and we've got to address that. In order to do that, we've got a, a very large radiator. In fact, we've even had to adjust the lower positions to be able to give us another inch of, uh, of uh, available space so that we now have uh, the largest possible radiator that we can package for surface area in this vehicle. In addition to that, we have a 850-watt uh, cooling fan to be able to pull air through in order to be able to facilitate that cooling. Uh, we also have a, a, a system that uh, allows us to retain power because our intercooler heat exchangers are necessary in order to be able to uh, keep the engine happy and the inlet temperatures down. We have a large one at the front of the vehicle uh, on center that is very similar to what you see in most uh, cars, but we could not end up going with a, the, the full size in front of the radiator or else we wouldn't be able to cool the rest of the uh, coolant. So we've ended up having to separate that. And there are two outboard coolers, which you can see either at the front of this or in the front of the vehicle, in the two corners behind the grillettes. Uh, those end up uh, all being uh, uh, series attached so that you end up having three intercoolers that are providing that same function, one on center and then two on each side. And that will allow us to uh, maintain inlet temperatures to maintain our full power capability. The transmission is also uh, something that ends up generating heat, and the automatic transmission ends up having actually two coolers. One of them ends up being a traditional N-tank uh, type cooler, but then that was insufficient for the functions that we were planning on having it perform. And we ended up having to add another cooler that we laid down flat because we couldn't, again, add more uh, density to that stack. The other element that made us uh, increase this capacity is the fact that we've uh, chosen to cool the differential by using transmission fluid. If you think about a transmission, it ends up being a very uh, large pump. So what we chose to do was we now pump transmission fluid all the way to the back to the differential and, and uh, pump it all the way back forward and use that same cooling system to be able to cool both the differential and also cool the transmission. In doing so, one of the, uh, one of the uh, benefits that we do receive is, is that we actually uh, preheat the transmission fluid under uh, certain conditions and it actually uh, uh, helps us warm up the transmission even, uh, even quicker. So again, it's a very efficient means that we've got to be able to do that. We've had to use computational fluid dynamics to be able to manage all this air because, again, you've got to control what portion of it's going to go through this cooler and through the other heat exchangers. If you look at some of the detail work that had to be done, you'll notice that in order to allow air to escape, we've got, as Dave pointed out, a vent on the top of the hood which allows some of the air to come out, but then you've got to balance it with air that's coming out through the bottom. These carefully designed louvers that you see here are designed so that we end up getting the right pressure drop and the right signal to be able to get just the right amount of air flowing through the transmission oil cooler and at the same time we end up getting uh, air going through the radiator as well and evacuated. So there's careful air management through this entire front of the vehicle. In addition, we end up having brake ducts that end up channeling the air, pull it off like a, a, a NACA duct section. Uh, pull the air up and it's deflected to exactly where we need it in order to be able to get brake cooling. If we're going to have a drag penalty, we want to make sure we get something for it. <laughs> um, again, the drive line is the next item I'd like to touch on. As you may remember from our first generation, we did end up having some issues with power hop. In order to be able to address that, we've come up with what is now a time proven formula where we end up stiffening the prop shaft and end up uh, uh, end up having asymmetric uh, stiffness half shafts. You'll notice that the one half shaft is uh, about 55 millimeters in diameter and the other is, uh, is about 30. And again, that is because there's a prescribed uh, formula that we have found that allows us to tune the stiffness of the half shafts to be able to mitigate that problem. Uh, let's see, uh, 
In addition to that, we did end up uh, having a structure uh, uh, enhancement package that we put together for the vehicle. We ended up uh, doing a very, a very credit or a very good job, I think, on being able to uh, define the uh, uh, base vehicle structure so that it ends up uh, meeting all of the requirements of the base car. The problem is, is that uh, when we add the additional cornering forces from the tires, that structure is no longer adequate. So rather than uh, increase the mass of the base vehicle, we chose instead to put together a bolt-on structure package to be able to give us what we needed. This shear panel is one of the key uh, members of that package. This, coupled with bracing on the top in the motor compartment and in the rear with some uh, features that you see here, which are some enhanced braces to the rear suspension, coupled with structural adhesive in the rear of the car, we've been able to increase the torsional stiffness of the vehicle by between 25 and 30 percent, which is significant because it ends up allowing the suspension to then work efficiently. The suspension system is something that has been completely retuned. McPherson strut and uh, multi-link rear suspensions have a total of 10 all-new bushings or mounts and six that have been retuned. Among those are the ones that seem like they would make sense if you were working on a race car. We have ended up taking the, uh, the tow links and we substituted ball joints for the bushings at either end. Also, any of the bushings that you find on or what were previously bushings on center have also been changed to ball joints. And this is, again, something that takes out compliance and gives you that really great on-center feel. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk about uh, the damping system. Now that we've gone to all this trouble and made a, a suspension that can react loads, we do end up having one other thing that's, uh, that's on these vehicles, and that is the third generation uh, MagnaRide system. The third generation ends up uh, having a couple of features that are significant. The first being that it ends up having an increase by 40% in the, in the amount of available maximum damping, so we can put a lot more damping in. In addition to that, the, the uh, dual coil design allows us to pull damping out faster so that when you go over a bump, the wheel can get back down to the road faster. This ends up resulting in a much smoother ride in addition to having the maximum control. I would just add that the magnetic ride control, which is the world's fastest acting suspension system, just got faster. Right. Previously, Going down the road at 60 miles an hour, magnetic ride control could make an adjustment in three inches of traveled road surface. Now, with the new controls that John talked about with a 40% greater uh, speed in the controller and the dual wire, uh, dual coil, we can make that suspension adjustment in one inch the traveled road at 60 miles an hour. Just think about how fast that is. You can't even blink that fast, and that's how fast the system responds. So the Fastest suspension system just got faster, so.